What's the tea with Trish G? Just um, a little update on the Samantha Murphy case. And yeah, I am reading the news to you, but I'm also doing my little input to it as well. Just um, I might start uploading these on my Trish G talks because they're more just me literally talking, <laughs> not pulling cards, not dowsing, not doing numerology. I'd love to get the birth date of this young man. Uh, if anybody knows the birth date fact of Patrick Stevenson, I'd like to do his numerology. Not that it makes any difference, but I'm always curious. And astrology. Although I'm not an astrologer, but I, you know, I, I'm learning more and more. You know, I've been learning for years, so you pick things up. So basically, this is the young man. And still, I think a lot of people are shocked. But, as always, the, the ban's been lifted now where at first we couldn't name him. I didn't name him on the first video, just in case. But a few hours after that, it was lifted. Um, but like anything, they paint this picture like clean cut you know, perfect family. But then they start to dish the dirt and allegedly he was out on a bender or a pub crawl, as they say in the UK, the night before and was last seen, I believe, about 3am, the last I saw. So if he was last seen at 3am, party, drinking, of where he went after that, I'm not sure yet, but it might be out there. Samantha goes on a run at 7 a.m., so it took about an hour, they say. So between, say, 7.30 and 8, their paths must have crossed. Now, it makes me wonder, was he on foot? Was he driving? They've seized his pickup truck. Um, was he driving? Was he, you know, lots of unanswered questions. But he's not talking. He's not cooperating. Makes me wonder if he's going to try and do a deal. Or maybe he'll just stay silent. There are many people that have never, ever given the details of where the person is. Ever. And I think that's terrible. Yeah, you know, they say he's not got a record, not been in custody, doesn't do drugs. Um, but... Or the video, I mean, it doesn't mean to say he does drugs, but he, he he was more of an outgoing character, but he might have been drinking. He's a big lad, he's tall, he looks a good six foot, I'd say. Sporty, so he's going to be fit. So she's still, her body remains unknown, the location. Alleged murderer Patrick Stevenson maintained his silence after spending a fourth night in custody. 22-year-old reserved his right to remain silent. So he's going down the silent route, giving detectives little to no help as they continue to try to locate Miss Murphy's remains. So this goes to trial. They're going to have to prove without reasonable doubt that it was him. I might not read every word on here. So he's declined to cooperate One aspect of the investigation police are focusing on is an analysis of security camera footage recently obtained from businesses in a light industrial and residential area in Ballarat East because he was out partying. I just, what a loss, waste of life. You know, she had the 51, prime of her life, doing her fitness, got beautiful children, husband, business. I mean, Mick, I must admit, since it's come out, he looks I mean, understandable. He doesn't look well. He looks exhausted. I think they need to be kept watch his health. But I've noticed there's a lot of things maybe the police say and then the media twist it. This is why I don't usually watch the news. And I don't buy newspapers or magazines anymore. Because something will get put out and then it'll be elaborated on in another. It'll be like, 
yeah, he, he was between two houses, home and his own home. That's what was read out at the beginning, his own home. And now it said he's house sitting with his girlfriend. So it's not his home, apparently. So, yeah, they're after security camera footage. Apparently, Patrick's mother is a primary school teacher. His dad's now an electrician. He was a professional footballer. Remains unclear whether there any footage seized by the police shows Miss Murphy or any of the potential vehicles of interest. So this Sunday, which is our mother day, Mother's Day in the UK, not sure if it's Mother's Day in Australia, because I know Canada and America, their Mother's Day is in May. There's actually lots of different Mother's Days all around the world. Uh, I didn't know that until um, I worked for an American company and realised we have lots of different Mother's Days. It's, I can't remember which country it was. One of them, it's, they have it in... November, December? I can't remember which country it was, though. I don't know why Mother's Day is different, but Father's Day tends to be more worldwide on the same day. Mr. Stevenson's silence continued after Miss Murphy's husband, Mick, issued a passionate plea for the young man to confess the whereabouts of her body. Must be terrible, that, knowing that someone knows. I was just such... We're hoping as a bit, yeah, I mean, he might crack yet. Yeah, it's early days, isn't it? We're hoping as a bit of change of heart and that he will cooperate. That'll bring her home, he said on Friday. We just, we'd just like some more answers now. He could be holding out to get um, a deal. Like they might say, look, if you... Give us her location. I don't know how this will work. So you give us a location. We'll get you a deal. But he may just stay silent and play the long game where they've got to prove his guilt. They, won't, they would not be conducting planned searches over the weekend unless the location had been uncovered by other means. I mean, he could have disposed of a body. Oh, this sounds, and it is gruesome, but it's unfortunately, you know, this is lie. Well, it isn't lie. It, it, it happens. What if he's disposed of her in a way that you'll never ever find her? You know, there are ways. Well. I'm not an expert, but there are ways, it seems. I mean, in water, that seems to be a way where it gets rid of a lot of DNA, depending how long they're in. And they may never be found in water, you know, fire, but it'd have to be intense heat. You know, there was a chemical way, I don't know. Uh, if he'd been out on a bender, had he kept her body until he sobered up and then done something. We've got a white four before wheel drive. A white four wheel drive. Sorry. That's been seized. Be forensically examined. His lawyer David Tominica. Uh, I think he said All right, let's have a look at these. Okay, so this is a bit more. I've signed up to this, subs paid and subscribed to this news. It's not, not a lot, but I've paid up and subscribed to it. But, you know, this is contributes, isn't it? So, accused killer Patrick Oren Stevenson went on a bender the night before Mum went missing. Now, this video I'm going to show in a second, very short, it's quite loud actually. Warning if you've got headphones in, it might go really loud. It doesn't even look like him, but then. It's in a like a club, so his hair looks darker, and but he looks absolutely 
hammered as we'd say in the UK, like waste he looks so drunk or he's supposed to be on a bando, which is what we would say in the UK. So they're saying a massive bender. Well, that's him. It's just too loud. Turn that off. Um, um with no music because it's just so loud. So that's him blurred out there. Or somebody, no, that's him. I mean, look, you can hardly, and that's somebody they're wanting to keep. Um, wanting to keep anonymous. So, if that's the case, and that was him, he's got to be under the influence. It doesn't make it right. He's got to be under the influence. So he went on a massive bender the night before she was killed. Oh, people close to the charged man have told the Herald Sun he was at a party where cocaine was consumed before attending the deck in Ballarat, which is open till 3 a.m. A video sh appears to show lines of white substance racked upon a mobile phone. That's in there. The footage was filmed by Stevens' girlfriend. And two of the friends, the footage uploaded is social media, Snapchat. You see how me social media and the internet is brilliant, but we'd never have all this evidence, you know, video footage of people. So it's, it has its good points. Yeah, a lot of people think it's an invasion of privacy, but say if one of your loved ones got murdered and the only way they caught them was through social media or CCTV, you'd be you'd be pleased to it. They're also seizing CCTV from outside Volta nightclub and several of several other venues. Wow, that looks darker there. Like I say, is inside, and then some of them photos. It's. He might have dyed his hair. Could just be the filter, quite filtered, isn't it? He seized his vehicle after executing three warrants. Yeah, so his house sitting lot, and where police swooped at six thirty a.m. on Wednesday. So. They said that it was his house at first, so just the media just seems to have... And I'm taking a lot of this with a pinch of salt because, you know, the media has been known to write incorrect information, not always purposely, or they elaborate things because it's self stories. A Suzuki Jimmy understood to belong to Mr. Stevens's partner remained in the driveway of that home. Well, oh, what she's thinking. There's the son of AFL player Aaron Stevenson who played 15 games for Richmond and Geelong between 2012 and 2014. I mean, he doesn't look too... They put the worst pitch out, don't they? Sometimes too much money, too much. Nothing wrong with having money at young age, but it can ruin people if they've got too much access to everything so easily and they, they don't appreciate it. Oh, it's a biggish guy. Look, he's got strong arms. He's an electrician. He's, he's into his sport. Isn't it going to be such a tragedy if it was through being under the influence, like drunk driving and knocks her over? Unless he purposely drove into her, even if he was under the influence. He must have still been drunk, technically, or under the, over the legal limit, because of the, there wasn't much time to sober up. 
So has he, this is just a speculation, has he hit her with a car, you know, but or his truck, but did he drive at her? Was it an accident? But they're saying it was uh, intentional, you know. I can't make the exact word, do you? It said he's risk of self-harm. She's, the magistrate, Michelle, I'm not going to say her name, my cat, I'll just butcher that, said she probably wouldn't have granted full suppression order anyway. They were seeking anyway, given the absence of any evidence of credible information as to why it was needed. It was already out there. It was very, very unlikely that I would have made the proceeding suppression order, her honour said. One line of inquiry, police are pursuing whether Miss Murphy, a mother of three, was struck by a car after leaving her Eureka Street home at 7am. Police have only said she died as the result of a deliberate act. To say if you were drink driving and it was an accident, would that be clustered deliberate? Or did he drive at her? It's just all speculation, by the way. Put your thoughts in the comments. Um, it's uh, Mick doing his gardening. Must be around this room. And it's easy. We all, including myself, looked at the <clears throat> him first. And I'm not saying everything I got in my readings, dowsing, wasn't happening in their life because it absolutely... Could have been, you know. There was things that I got that could still have been happening in her life, her private life. It's interesting because he's about the daughter's age, I think. She's in her early 20s. Even close colleagues were kept in the dark because of the need to keep the suspect unaware he was under scrutiny. I think they were watching him for about two weeks. Yeah. Because this is a small place. It could have got out. Gossip wildfires surrounding the case would have meant there was a risk. Even a small detail in it simply passed on could reach the wrong ears. I, I just get cold chills every time I see or think of her passed away. Yeah, if they took the statements from people close to him even before and asking questions about his movements, it would have arranged alarm bells. You know, it would have been too obvious, wouldn't it? They've been surveilling him for up to two weeks. And they couldn't have done it earlier because it would have sounded the alarm if they'd seized his vehicle. Their suggestions, a short piece of CCTV gleaned early on in the investigation was a key element in Mr. Stevenson becoming a suspect. He has so far refused to help investigators. They're still saying he's not known to the family. I think it's Mick's birthday today or yesterday. So he's a Pisces. Interesting. The prosecutor asked for 20 weeks to put all the evidence in the case. Mr. Stevenson will return to court for committal mention on August the 8th. Blind gate. Mm. Let's just go back. This is the last article I'm going to go over. I just thought I'd do a bit of an update on the latest 
this was March 9th at 10, uh, 43 a.m. Now, I don't know if that's March 9th, their time or our time. Because this is the Herald Sun. hope it's better than the UK Sun. So, he loved foot. He shared the love of footy with his dad. Went from working as a tradie to being charged with one of the state's most prolific murders. So, who is he and what is he really like? Yeah, leave your comments. But, you know... Be mindful of speculating. I get a lot of comments that are just aren't helpful at times. That's him there, that young man on the right. Look, fuck his dad, didn't he? And that's the two sisters. He's got two sisters, an older sister and a younger sister. I think he's the middle child. He even smiles like his dad. Look. I don't know whether it, just something about his eyes never put it, there were some pictures his eyes just looked dead and that's always the key with a lot of these people that can commit these you know even we don't know I'm just speculating whether he was drink driving or whether he was on foot how did he, you know he was 10 there so it was 12 years ago A once wide-eyed footy fanatic who stood by the side of his AFL footballer dad at every game is now at the centre of Victoria's most high-profile alleged murders. You know, he seems to have had a good start in life, you know. But I know that doesn't mean nothing. Like, we don't know. Every, how many times have we heard, oh, they're a lovely family. I'm not saying they're not. But then you find out stuff's gone on behind closed doors or it isn't as lovely or he may just be he may just have drank too much done something really stupid and it's cost going to cost him well, it's cost somebody else's life and ruined a lot of other lives but wouldn't they be calling it unless they reduce it to manslaughter I don't know if that happens We'll have to wait and see what evidence they've got, how they've got to that conclusion. So he's a tradesman. He was arrested in his work gear and faced court for the first time on Thursday. Yeah, look at that. His lawyer said he was at risk of self-harming due to his young age and seriousness of facing a murder charge, scanned and packed courtroom. He was not handcuffed. Throughout the hearing, he stared straight ahead, emotionless. Asked if he could hear Ms. Uh, Mr. Stephen said, yes, your honour. This is the mum and dad. Uh, Dad looks, you know, decent. they look happy, but Patrick, to me, doesn't look happy. The eyes, something about his eyes. Dad. I don't get the same vibe about his mum and dad. He went to St. Patrick's College, classmates told the Herald Sun. He was often on the outer and that struggled. And that he struggled with his mental health. Now they're saying he didn't have mental health issues, see what I mean? But they're probably just speculating he doesn't. I was getting the feeling he was a bit of a jock, as I'd say, but. You know, he's lived in his dad's shadow. Maybe, you know, he is more of a. Um, Oh, here we go. Look, it said welfare staff at St. Patrick's College dealt with frequent outbursts. Why has he got this anger issue? 
He was described as showing some eccentric behaviour and was sometimes bullied at school. Those former classmates said his mental health concerns were well known. Yet before they were reporting he didn't have any. But then the papers wouldn't know that. While the families were not not known to one another, Mr. Stevenson and Miss Murphy's eldest daughter Jess attended the same primary school. I said they must have done, they'd be similar age. St. Francis Xavier Primary. Their paths must have crossed. They might not have been pally with them or said hello to them, but their paths must have crossed at school. Stevenson family settled in Ballarat after Oren followed his high school sweetheart Whitney from Wagga, where her family lived. And at 17, the couple became parents to daughter. Well, that must be his parents. Yeah, Oren is the father, because Oren is Patrick's middle name. So Whitney is the mother. So they had the first child very young, at 17. Two years later, Patrick arrived. So they had Patrick, age 19. They're still kids themselves. And then two years after, Sophie. Sophie. So three children at the age of 21. I'm not saying there's anything, you could be perfectly great parents, but you still kids yourself. They have lived in Ballarat since 2002 after moving from the Riviera region of North South Wales, New South Wales, sorry. So pretty much when Patrick was born then. Or, uh, Patrick was 12, rarely, then age 12, rarely missed a game. Patrick last year was rolling around the rooms with the Geelong Cats. And this year he's rolling around with the Richmond Tiger Boys, he said. He wouldn't pass it up for quids. He loves it. And the girls had their, a lot of fun with it as well. He means his daughters. It's a massive bonus that we can share these pretty good times and hours with our kids. So, they were very, very young parents. Guy oh, looks like his dad. Shock, total shock. Neighbour Catherine said they've been a lovely family, great neighbours. They're wonderful, absolutely wonderful neighbours. It could just be a, just a tragic accident. Be about 20 weeks, so four months ish, before detectives piece together all the CCTV footage and phone data that will form their case against Mr. Stevenson. Shared a love of footy and food. Where did I see food in that? He shared a love of footy with his dad. While Oren Stevenson's career never reached any dizzy heights, he remains a record holder as the oldest first-time draftee in AFL history. Stevenson, or the Big O, as he was dubbed. So I imagine he grew up feeling... It depends, some kids. Like you think David Beckham's boys? How did they feel? Did they, and having two famous parents, it could go one way or the other. Like They could feel inadequate. He was dubbed and was in shock. Selection at age 29 was pick 7 and 8 by Geelong in the 2011 AFL National Draft. Politely spoken, spoken, Stevenson thought he had missed the AFL opportunity having trained with both Hawthorne and St Kilda before being overlooked. 
Rex Chance came at age 29 when the Cats came knocking after they'd lost a pair of Premiership Brookmen in the Brad at Ottens and Mark Blake. I know nothing about Australian football. It was fitting that Stevenson's pathway to AFL will be unique given a life shaped by originality ever since his parents named him after Tom Selleck character. Oh, Orin Sackett. In the 1979 Western movie, The Sackets. There you go. Raised in Albury before some years, in Griffin and Wagga Wagga, he played rugby league until he was 17. His father was very into fitness. Followed his high school sweetheart Whitney from Wagga to Ballarat, where her family lived, and at 17, the couple became parents to daughter Emily. Amelia, Amelia, is that? Amelie. Then Patrick came two years later and two years after that, Sophie. Had three children in six years. An electrician and telecommunications technician in Ballarat, Stevenson played eight games with Geelong in 2012 before he moved on when the Cats recruited Hamish McIntosh. I won't read all this out. A massive bonus for my wife and kids is something I'll never forget, so I'm pretty blessed to be able to share it with them. It's him there, isn't it, to the right? I came down and played with Red Ann, which is a very good side, then won flags in 2002, 2004. Which one is he there? On the right? Uh -huh. Hair for the Tigers in 2013. 200 centimetres and 104 kilograms knew he could match it with AFL Hookman. Anyway, it's just a bit of background on the young man. So this is the timeline. From fifth, sixth. Just seeing if there's anything here that jumps out. What if all these people have been out there looking? To me, like if someone knows it, it's like they've, unless she could be found, then it, they've, he's wait, all their time's been wasted. If he knows where she is and it's nowhere near where they've looked. Yeah, I wonder if this lady Sissy, is he the same? Is he, he'd have been 21 then. Was it him that attacked her? See, on the 8th of February, investigators that stage believe there were no suspicious circumstances. So really, through CCTV and mobile phone data, imagine years ago why so many people got away with their crimes. That was the 10th and 11th. Find Samantha Murphy face page, ugh, Facebook page shut down. Apparently, that all ended up. The police infiltrated that, and um, 
I wasn't that impressed. The lady who opened it and didn't, she wanted some podcasts or interviews. I thought, I don't know, just found her a bit rude. She swore a lot, which I'm not saying there's anything wrong with swearing, but she seemed arrogant, in my opinion, because she's going on about like psychics and stuff. And this isn't because of what I did, but she's going on about psychics and stuff and intuitives, and they should keep, you know, they would. She, she had something to say but then she started to share her dream and then she got in quick touch with the psychic and was telling them they were going in the wrong direction I was like hang on a minute you were just bashing people like that and now you're you're having and I'm not saying that her dream might not have been right it's like so it's alright for you to do it even though you don't clash yourself as but you bash anyone else that does it that's what I didn't like it was hypocritical I thought I find it quite. And she, I think she's a businesswoman, but it's like her ego is a bit overinflated. It's like I'm all right to lead, I'm all right to do it, but you're not allowed to do this. That's that's the vibe I got from her. I didn't really like her energy at all. Um, kind of quite arrogant. So on the 22nd of February, they claim one or more parties are behind the disappearance. The search shifts to a new location at Mount Clear based on phone data. So that's, I think, about the time. In this word, that was the day of Madeleine Soto's birthday, which has got nothing to do with this, but it's just how these things. And Madeleine Soto was born 2011, when that was the year that was something to do with the father of Oram Patrick. March the 7th, there was a big gap there, look, if you're watching on the screen. A 22-year-old Scotsman man was arrested on Wednesday, March 6th, but had not been charged. And then he was charged at 2.15, or it was confirmed. He got told about 2.30 on the 7th. 3 p.m. His cue is, is revealed. And it just goes up to March the 8th when he's named and there's nothing more. I think I'm going to stop there because we've talked about quite a lot there. So that's the mother there with dark hair, but she's blonde haired now, really blonde. So I don't know if her hair's dyed there. Well, that's her natural colour. But she's like bleach blonde now. Just makes you wonder, doesn't it? Anyway, thanks for watching, listening. Uh, let me know. What do you think? But to be honest, until we get more evidence, what evidence do they have? And we could be waiting up to four months. Things might get leaked out before then, or they drop drip feed things, don't they? But if they're wanting to get a watertight case, they've got to really, same with the Madeleine Soto. I mean, that mother to me, not buying her performance at all. I think she's well in. Turns out, just on the end of this, Madeline Soto, they've been together since Madeline was about nine. Eight or nine. Yeah. And there was something I did hear that someone did put on Twitter, but it could be lies. But if it's true, then I'm, I, I don't even want to think about it being true because. If what they said was true, they said they they were a friend of her aunt's or something like this. And I was like, well, if, if your if Madeline's auntie's telling you this, then they're all guilty of knowing about SA and much worse. 
why was nobody doing anything? That's why I don't know if that's what was leaked was accurate because that would imply that the family all knew. But maybe they did. Some families do and they do nothing. I think the mum's more involved. And another bit I thought, which I'm going to have to do a separate video on this, what if she dressed up in the black shorts, the green hoodie and the white Crocs? Apparently she's quite small, similar height to Madeline. And there's a picture of a reflection in sunglasses. And a lot of people think it's that Madeline, but it's not. It's Jennifer with shorter hair. And she looks like a little girl. And she's got black shorts on. What if she dressed up to look like Madeline? It was her that was on the CCTV acting like... What if we dropped her off to look like she was Madeline? Because they look very alike, and when Madeline puts those glasses on, like her mum's got, they look like twin, you know, apart from Jennifer's hair's darker. Just something I thought of. I, I feel the mum is way more, and I've got some more videos to upload on my um, members section, because they are quite graphic. And um, alleged, one of the friends of his, of Stefan, knows, the, has met Jennifer. It's apparently, he's witnessed her. She's very, I think she's got bipolar, but other stuff going on. I'm not saying, you know, all people with bipolar do this. But apparently she'd have these outbursts. She'd have to go out to the car and calm down. She'd come back. She'd just flip off over over nothing, you know. Oh, very erratic on lots of medication. This has come from one of his friends that knows him and has met her, has met the family, that's known him for years. You know, they they all went to Disney World together. Now, I'd hope those people weren't lying because they've gone public with this, you know, and they would be putting themselves in a very compromising position if they're going and doing that and lying. Uh. And really, I don't feel Madeline's got ADHD. She's got trauma. But then a lot of people with ADHD, it's a trauma response, probably. You know, it's like nearly everybody's got bloody ADHD these days. That, that didn't... There was probably, when I went to school, the odd one in the class that you would think there's something really not right going on here with this person and what's going on in that, you know, their, their home life. There was like maybe one in a class or the year, there might be a couple of people. It's now almost like not having it, you're the odd one out. I think it's just way too overdiagnosed. Di diagnosed. It's just my opinion. And a lot of it's trauma response. A lot of these kids that have been abused, they haven't got ADHD, it's trauma. But they've labelled it as ADHD. In my professional opinion, for what it's worth, I'm not a doctor, it's not medical advice. But most of this about is trauma in, in people. And, and adults that are getting diagnosed later on, I bet if you go back, they've, they've got trauma. Now, I know people that are really OCD, and I know for a fact they've gone through abuse sexually they've been fostered been that in foster homes back and forward to the mother but definitely sexually abused and they've got mental health issues now like my sort of age and got severe OCD but really it's trauma that's just a a label that they're then given to their uh behavior or the, the ways of dealing with things i guess ocd is a good it's a way of um you want to control everything in your life and there's the fear aspect but anyway enough on that that's for another video and at 44 44 i'm going to now stop although we've just gone over the clock lots of love leave your comments uh let me know what you think if you've got any more information
But be mindful about just guessing. You could say, I suspect, or maybe this is my, you know, thoughts, but not to just put wild, wild accusations without, uh, and saying it's fact, that's what I mean. Because I know when I do readings, I have to say this is alleged. But if you're giving a wild accusation and you're saying it's fact, but you've got nothing to back it up with, please be mindful about not doing that. Not he said, she said, because it would be hearsay, wouldn't it? If you've got receipts of facts to, to back it up, then you can email me at trishaguk at gmail.com. I welcome anybody to email me that's got some evidence, solid evidence, receipts, um, case that you might want me to look at, questions you might have. But don't just email me with war and peace about your life, if you know what I mean. Don't want that to come across the wrong way. But, you know, that's not what I'm asking you to do, is to email me about your life. Because I've had people do that, and it's like dumping all their problems on me when I don't know you, you know, and you're not having a reading. You're not wanting me to help you. You're just dumping your life story on me, which is a huge boundary issue purely because i haven't asked for it what i'm asking for is things to do with the case okay lots of love and i am now going for about the third time see you on the next video